Hello everyone, welcome back. So in the previous video, we did talk about Ansible and uh, writing Ansible playbooks, configuring a virtual machine using Ansible. And uh, if we take a look at our infrastructure that we are planning to build, there is a lot of virtual machines here. At least 10 virtual machines just from this diagram here. Now installing and configuring each of these virtual machines manually is going to be a pain. It's going to take a lot of time. It's going to take a lot of repeated work. So we need some sort of tool. So what is the problem that we are facing? We have a lots of virtual machines to launch and manage, but uh, we don't want to do that manually. We need to have some sort of way to automate that. So that's where Vagrant comes into picture. Okay, so what is Vagrant? To keep things simple, Vagrant is an open source tool to build and manage virtual machines. You can read a bit about uh, Vagrant in vagrantapp.com slash intro. Alright, so let's go ahead and install Vagrant. Alright, so we simply searched for install Vagrant and uh, we go into their uh, vagrantapp.com website. Okay, so we have to go to the download page. Download the version corresponding to your operating system. So I'm just gonna download the Windows version here. Okay, that is painfully slow. Okay, so I'm downloading Vagrant, but this is like painfully slow. You can see that it's 73 kilobytes per second. It's gonna take forever at this rate. So here is a little trick I do. I have a virtual machine in DigitalOcean. So I copy the download link from here and I log into that virtual machine. So here is the virtual machine. And um, I have a website hosted in there. So what I do is I just download the same thing but inside the virtual machine. Uh, so this is a cloud server so they have a much better network and it will download much faster. So here you can see it's downloading at 4.5 um, megabytes per second. The thing is my internet is not really slow but depending on the service provider sometimes it may take a lot of time to download certain files from certain servers. Alright so that's downloader. So what I do is um, I have already configured it. So I just download it from my, uh, let me just check. All right, so it's present, so I just download it. And here I'm getting, okay, actually I have some downloads happening in the background, let me just pause it. All right, much better. All right, so I'm just gonna install it. And uh, Vagrant is asking me to restart the computer. So okay, I'll do that. All right, so we have Vagrant installed. So the next thing that we want to do is open up PowerShell. Uh, I have PowerShell opened here. Let me just make a directory called uh, Vagrant. And uh, inside that, I will do a, a demo. Okay. So you can do Vagrant space in it in any directory and it will create a vagrant file so in windows it's pretty slow but uh, in linux and mac os it works uh, much much faster so as you can see it has created a file called vagrant file let's take a look at the file so i'm going to open that in visual studio code so this is a pretty simple file and uh, most of the stuff in here are already commented. So I'm just going to remove all the commented out part so that it's easy to explain stuff. All right. So this is all we have. So what it means is, so the first thing that we need to uh, look at is called the box. So in Vagrant, a box means a virtual machine image. For example, Debian 10 is an image. So in this case, it has a default value of base. But we have been working with Debian 10, right? So I will just change it to Debian slash Buster 64, which is Debian 10. So this is the bare minimum configuration that you need. So what do we have? We have a Vagrant file here. And uh, inside the Vagrant file, we have configured to use the box as Debian slash Buster 64. So that's the only thing that we have done. All right, so let's go ahead and run Vagrant up. So Vagrant is kind of slow in Windows, but we have to work with that. We don't have much options here right now. 
So what Vagrant is doing at this moment is it's creating a virtual machine based on the configurations that we have specified in the Vagrant file. In our case, we have only specified a single thing that is the box name. So it's just going to launch a virtual machine in VirtualBox using that Debian 10 as the base image. So as you can see here, it created a virtual machine in VirtualBox and it is running. And if you read here, it's actually installing rsync to the VM. So the first time that you run Vagrant app, it's going to take some time. Probably if you don't have the box already in the local system, it's going to take some time to download that. So in my case, it's done everything it needed to do and uh, the VM is already up. So if I open VirtualBox, I can see that there is a VM running here. So from the same directory, if you do Vagrant SSH, you will be able to access the VM through SSH. So now we are inside that VM we just created. All right, so we just created our simple virtual machine using Vagrant. So now you can suspend the VM using Vagrant Halt. Sorry, not suspend, but shut down. You can see that the VM has been powered off. You can destroy the VM using Vagrant Destroy. I'm not gonna destroy it right now. So that's the basic or simple virtual machine managed using Vagrant. But we need to add a few more things in here and we need to configure it to our requirement. So our requirement was that we need to build a, an infrastructure like this. So that means there are multiple virtual machines and they need to communicate each other. So we need to give them each a unique name. We need to give them a unique IP address, etc. We're going to put all of them in the same network so that they can communicate to each other. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to configure the memory limit in VirtualBox for the same VM. I have the original Vagrant file that was created when we did the Vagrant init here. So if you come here, you can see that there is a configuration for the provider, config.vm.provider. So I'm just going to copy this one and paste it here and obviously uncomment it. And I'm going to change the uh, memory to 512. Also, we need to create a network, a private network and assign a private IP to it. So I'm just going to copy this. All right, let's launch the machine again. All right, so it created the VM. So let's do Vagrant. SSH. Okay, so we are inside the VM. A few things to note here. The user that Vagrant uses is called Vagrant and it does have sudo permission. So you can switch to another user or root. Also, when you do uh, Vagrant space SSH hyphen config, it will show the SSH config that it uses to access this virtual machine when you do Vagrant SSH. So here you can see the host name is localhost and the port number is this and the identity file is this that is there is a private key vagrant generates when you create the virtual machine that will be used to authenticate to the virtual machine so what all did we change in the vagrant, uh, vagrant file we changed the memory to 512 and we added a network with the ip address of this let's see if that changes have been reflected okay so if i do free dash h we can see that the memory is 480 uh, 483 that is you know around 500 megabytes and if you do ipa you can see that the network has been created so now we can do anything in this virtual machine as we used to do in our previous debian virtual machine all right so far so good let me exit out of the vm again and uh, let me halt the vm actually you know what i'm not going to do that i'll just leave it there so the next thing that we need to do is provision the vm so provision means when the VM is coming up, we can ask it to execute few, you know, scripts or a command so that it will be ready with everything we need. Let's say, for example, we need to have Apache running in this VM or Nginx running in this VM. We can actually install that as a step and it will be executed when the VM is coming up. So in the other background file, we have the provisioning block here. Let me just copy it and paste it here. So here we are using a provisioning of shell. So there are multiple provisioners that you can use. One is shell. 
that means simply execute shell commands apt-get update apt-get install etc also you can use ansible as a provisioner you can use chef as a provisioner etc but in our case since we are using microsoft windows since i am using microsoft windows uh, to be able to use ansible as the provisioner i have to hack around a few things so i'm not going to do that now so for now we are going to use the shell as the provisioner so in the shell provisioner we are doing two commands one is apt-get update and apt-get install apache all right so as you can see the vm is already running so we can ask vagrant to reload the vm with provisioning so if i do vagrant reload dash dash provision it's going to reload the vm and it's going to run the provisioning steps so as you can see it's installing apache all right done let me do vagrant ssh again and uh, let me find the ip address all right so we know the ip 192.168.33.10 and uh, if i open it i can see the apache's default page so everything is working so what if i want to access this vm via ssh but i don't want to do vagrant ssh and uh, i want to be able to do ssh from here now obviously it's gonna say permission denied because we have been added our key there so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna add a step in the provisioning to add my key to the vagrant user so that i can ssh into the vm from anywhere in the local network so i'm just gonna copy my private uh, sorry public key i'm just gonna copy this part i'm not copying the user uh, and i'm not copying the command part so if you remember from the previous videos one of the ways by which you can give access is by editing the authorized keys files and adding our public key there so what i'm going to do is in the provisioning step i'm going to add echo let me enable word drop and redirection home slash home slash vagrant dot ssh authorized keys now let's reload with provisioning again and uh, we are done so let's try to log in again and there we are so remember this is from my local windows machine uh, wsl from my windows machine and uh, all we did is we copied the public key and uh, we added a step we added a step in the provisioning to add our public key to the authorized keys under the vagrant user so now i can log in as the vagrant user using my private key all right so now we have one vm running there using vagrant so now what if i want to run multiple vms controlled by the same vagrant file so for that let me go back to the vagrant directory we created it's called the demo i'm just going to do a vagrant destroy so that it destroys the vm because we don't want it anymore so this is what i'm going to do i want to create another vm with a different ip address and a different host name but it should have a nginx installed instead of apache so let's do that let me just comment out the whole thing for now. Uh, let's create the nginx vm first. Config dot vm. Fine nginx. Now remember, we give it the name nginx here. So we do nginx dot vm dot provider. Virtual box because we are using virtual box as the provider. And uh, we need to configure the network. But here we have to change this config to nginx because this is a multi VM setup that we are doing in this vagrant file. Also, we're going to give nginx.vm.hostname. let's say nginx also we're gonna copy the uh, provisioning here let me just uncomment it oh 
One thing to make note here is that this is single string. This doesn't have any line break in between. It's showing like this only because I have enabled word wrapping. So if I disable word wrap, you can see that it goes into a single line. Because if your public key have line breaks in between them, it's not going to work. Again, we have to change this config to nginx. And uh, we need to close the block using n. n. This n is for this one. Remember, we are still inside this main block. So we don't need these. I'm just going to delete that. Let me just add a comment saying the nginx vm. And uh, next, we need another vm. Let's say that's for Apache. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the entire thing and paste it and obviously going to change Apache, uh, sorry, Nginx to Apache. Also, we want to change the IP address. We're going to give 11 and the host name. Okay. Obviously, we have to change the package here to Nginx and uh, let's leave Apache asset here. All right, so I guess we have everything we need. Let's launch them. Vagrant up dash dash provision. And here you can see that it's bringing up two virtual machines. So that took some time, but finally our, both the virtual machines are up. Here we can see that demo Nginx and demo Apache are running. So if you want to do Vagrant SSH, you can do that using Vagrant SSH nginx which will let you log into nginx or uh, you know whatever the vm name that you have given similarly apache also so let's actually use our uh, you know ssh from our local machine yeah so i'm able to log in and if i do 11 yeah, so that works too. So now we have two virtual machines with two different IP addresses in the same network, but managed by Vagrant. So this is the base for our next steps where we want to create our entire infrastructure. We will be creating all of them using Vagrant. And in the next video, we will be talking about Git because we want to keep all our configuration files and everything in a Git repository. So we will be doing that in the next video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.